the first of a two-part series about a legendary buck. Nine million acres of forest, 1,700 miles of continuous shoreline, 4,300 lakes, 12,000 miles of streams, more than 300 waterfalls, 15 counties, two time zones, and one area code. Welcome to the Upper Peninsula. Welcome to 906 Outdoors. Along with deer hunting come deer stories. Stories of big bucks shot, monsters that got away, stories of giant bucks, legends who lurk only in the deepest, darkest swamps or some remote piece of UP wilderness where very few hunters have the will to intrude. Old granddaddies able to outwit even the most seasoned of hunters. Ghosts offering only an occasional enticing glimpse in the preseason, able to vanish in the season of the hunt. Bucks so legendary, they've acquired names. I remember when I was just a young kid, tagging along with my dad on a deer season visit to an old canvas wall tent where a group of hunters spent their season each year. They told an intriguing tale of a wise old buck who had outsmarted them year after year. They called them Old Ironsides. And I remember one seasoned old hunter dressed in red and black wool sitting on a stump talking about the day he had his chance at Old Ironsides. He said the rack suddenly appeared to his left through the snow-covered spruces. And as it passed by, he swung his gun around behind him to an opening where he'd get a shot at the deer. The deer vanished. At the end of his hunt, he went over and found strange prints in the snow. He said the deer got down on all four knees and crept by out of sight till it was out of range, hopped up on all fours and continued on its path. In hindsight, certainly an exaggerated deer tale. But to a young soon-to-be hunter, it was as real as if I'd been sitting there myself. That scene played over and over in my head like a movie on many a snowy morning sitting on a stump. Are they all just stories? Stories that have grown just a little at a time with each telling of the tale around some deer camp table? Or do they really exist? I like to think they do. Is up to my shoulder. The Legend of Thunder Canyon um, is a buck that uh, I discovered in 2013. I had um, shot a nice buck uh, in the mountains um, and uh, right before I shot him I heard a, a buck fight break out and it was a tremendous battle and uh, at the end of the battle I heard a distinct sound of antler breaking. Well doe come up in front of me and uh, 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 shortly behind her there was a buck with broken antlers and uh, I ended up getting him. He was an eight point and his uh, tines were broke off, and um, I knew if I could find the place where they fought, I knew that uh, I'd be in business, and circled and circled, and sure enough, I found the spot where they fought. It was all tore up, trees broken, and lo and behold, I found that little piece of antler. Well, on my way back out that day, I found a track that was just a gigantic track. It had to be from a 250-pound animal. Hunted that area the rest of the year, never saw that deer. Went back the next year, 2014, and uh, scouting the area, and I found a really nice uh, shed antler. And uh, so I knew there was a good buck that made it through and I was excited about hunting in uh, 2014. And we got the snowmageddon there a few days before season and it was no go, uh, no cars go anywhere. And uh, I couldn't even get within miles of the hunting spot. So that year was a bust. He knows me, he knows who I am and he knows my little tricks and he's still out here.
Today's show is brought to you in part by Rapid River Knife Works. Rapid River Knife Works is the largest custom knife factory showroom in Michigan. Hunting knives, pocket knives, and kitchen knives. Watch your custom knife being made and engraved. Free laser engraving with your personal message or company logo. Lifetime warranty on every knife and free sharpening. Bring the family and visit Rapid River Knife Works today. It's 11, 16, 15, the second day of deer season. I'm up here at uh, Ravens Point on Lookout Mountain here, the little rock fort, and uh, I'm deer hunting. So this is the area that I hunt. This is uh, known as the Huron Mountains. Uh, it's an area that stretches from Marquette to uh, Lance to the west and uh, goes from pretty much uh, Republic to Lake Superior. It's about a thousand square miles of mostly primarily public land. Um, it's big mountains. Uh, they go up to almost 2,000 feet. It's rugged and it's steep. It's steep woods. Um, it's an area with very few deer. The deer populations have just plummeted in the last few years with the severe winters. The wolves may have had something to do with it, but um, it's, it's the most difficult place to hunt that I know of. Uh, combine the, the, the terrain, the conditions with the winters and the snow and the low deer populations, it's, I can't think of a more difficult uh, area to hunt. And then when you do it the way that I do, the old fashioned way, you, you, I, I stalk and I track and I sneak and when the weather isn't con right, conducive to that, when it's not right for stalking or tracking or sneaking, I find uh, good crossings and scrape lines and rub lines and I'll sit there and I'll wait. Um, it's hard work. You know, uh, uh, I keep track of all my hunts. I keep a journal with me and I write down everything I see and uh, weather conditions and everything. Uh, last year during the firearm season, I saw an average of 2.48 deer per year and um, I saw a total of uh, one buck for every 48.3 hours hunted. Um, a lot different than what you see uh, in southern Michigan where you can go out and see 15, 20 deer a day and, and you know three or four, five, six bucks a day. Up here, if you see three or four or five, six bucks a year, you've had a tremendous year. The challenge is, is, is hard to describe. The reward is that when you're out here doing this kind of hunting, if you even see a single deer, if you see a button buck, if you see a doe, if you see a pine martin, or if you see even a darn squirrel, it's something to, to remember and something to be happy about because the sightings of, of living creatures out here are so few and far between. It's, uh, you, you go sometimes for days without seeing a person. And the other beauty of hunting this country, uh, I haven't seen another hunter in the woods in three years. And uh, it's, it's deep woods. Uh, most guys don't have the time to go here. And if they did have the time, it's hard to work up the will and the, the guts and the determination physically to, to go out and do this. Mentally is a whole nother ball game. It can be so frustrating, so, so disappointing. At times you just want to give up, but uh, if you really want to get that big buck, you can't give up. You have to believe, you have to keep going. I think it's a good place to deer hunt. There's oaks on the mountain over there, obviously. There's deer that use the mountain. So I think I picked a good spot. I had a close encounter right before daylight, about five after seven, I had one come by me. I think it was a buck. It's like he knew right where I was. He followed me here and he knew I had to come and check me out. And he checked me out. And he got downwind to me. And it got just a little lighter. And I thought I'd sneak down that way and see what he's doing. He must have been watching me, because as soon as I took a half a step, uh, boom, doom, da doom, da doom, he snipped, he, he spooked, he ran away, and then he snorted at me, and it was over with that one. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll get that one chance this, this year, it ain't gonna be easy. So far I've seen two wolves and I've seen one deer and that's it. 2015 I went back and uh, hunted again and hunted, uh, geez, I think it was eight or nine days in the season before I saw a buck. And finally on the uh, 24th of November, um, 
I saw the giant. I saw the guy that I'd been looking for my whole life. Long story short, he come into 30 yards and, and I was expecting him further and he come out at 30 and, and I saw his head and I had the gun in my hands ready to go and I went to bring it up and right when I did that he looked right at me. I just put the scope on the gun and I just had to get him in the scope and so I thought I'm just going to hurry it up and I tried to hurry it up and when I did that he was gone and uh, instinctively the finger hit the trigger, the shot went off and he was gone. It was an ill-advised shot and I went up there and followed it up and I hit a tree right about where his feet were. I never, you know, never got the gun all the way up and um, well, I kicked myself. I'd worked for years, for decades, trying to get a chance at that buck of a lifetime and I got the opportunity and I blew it and I was just crushed. And went home that night and it, it was just the most empty feeling. And that was my chance of a lifetime. And I gotta tell you, it's a really empty feeling inside right now. I just had a chance at the biggest buck I've ever seen in the UP. 40 yards from me. Biggest buck I've seen in 30 years. And I blew it. 906 Outdoors is brought to you by Cooking Wild Seasonings. Cooking Wild Seasoning Summer Sausage. Regular, jalapeno, and garlic. Get yours today at cookingwildseasonings.com. Along the lines, as, as I'm hunting this guy, one day I came back to the truck and there's a note on my truck and uh, it said uh, something to the effect of, uh, looks like we're hunting that same big buck on the mountain and the young fella wrote, uh, I saw him three times, never got a shot. And, he wrote, uh, you know, it's mostly public land here, and uh, uh, you know, uh, if you if you get him, I'd love to hear the story. And he closed it. He said, "Good luck to you and the big buck." And well, I found I found the place to hunt. Uh, actually, by chance, I was looking for good uh, good snow and big hills to ski down. So I was skiing up a mountain, which I dubbed Buck Mountain, and uh, saw just loads of old deer sign buck sign and thought that this was like the most I'd ever seen in my life and that I had to come back um, in summer and in the fall and scope it out. So I did. I came back the next summer and there was lots of deer sign around and it was uh, a heavy acorn year that year and I could tell that was going to be on and then later in the fall it was on. There was just deer trails everywhere and uh, huge buck sign, scrapes and rubs all over the place. Um, so I kind of started keying in on some spots and I got to a spot I was sitting and I like sat you know sat down and was taken off my backpack and I still had my scope covers on because it was like snowy and I didn't want to get a bunch of stuff on my lens and so I was taking my pack off and getting my scope covers kind of getting ready to come off and I hear this chick, 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 fast deer walking sound and and I look up and there goes this massive buck with with the biggest rack I've ever seen in my life and I fumble with my scope cover and get the gun up and just kind of barely get on his butt as he moves into a big thicket. And that was that was what I saw of him that day. And then so later that day at like noon or so, I decided to go walk around the mountain and basically because I wanted to go up there and eat some lunch in the sunshine. Uh, so I just kind of wasn't even hunting per se. I was going along and it's all super rocky and I was pulling myself up these rocks and uh, I hunk myself up, up over one and look up and like 20 feet away from me probably standing on this boulder again is the hugest buck I've ever seen in my life and he snorts and uh, runs off and I just kind of stood there on the rock wondering about all that. <laughs> when he was looking down on me from the rock and I was totally astounded it looked like it was like this but you know. Was, uh, and then I saw him again like a day or two later uh, in a in a thicket or a swamp where I don't even know what I was doing there because I could only see like 15 or 20 feet with a scoped rifle so it was kind of ridiculous to even be there but I was basically like crawling along in some hemlocks and uh, heard some sound and stopped and I could see some kind of body movement and then uh, there was this little opening about like yay big and all the branches and I saw the rack go by 
and uh, put my gun up and basically just saw a wall of pine needles in my scope and that was that. For that year I didn't see him again. I felt like maybe I didn't suck too bad as a hunter because I got close to him and I saw him several <laughs> times. But then uh, it also made me feel like he was definitely better than me and always was uh, a couple steps ahead and had the had the hidden trump card generally. <laughs> so here we are. November twenty fifth, twenty fifteen. Wednesday is day before Thanksgiving. And uh so you wonder, you work 20 some years to get a chance at a big buck, you get a big buck and you blow it. You wonder how long it's gonna take to get another chance. Well this time, ladies and gentlemen, it took less than 12 hours. Went back the next day to follow up on the shot, make sure that I didn't hit him, you know, it was right before dark when I blew it. And, um, went back and found where my shot hit, no sign of a shot. And, so I decided, and a sign of hit, and so I decided to follow where the deer went. 20 after one, I'm sneaking along the base of the mountain, following the path that that buck took after I shot at him yesterday. Found the easiest path back out to the road so I can get back into the new spot I built. And I'm sneaking along, and I look, and there he is up ahead of me. There he is, middle of the day, 1.30. And he's faced, like, coming from right to left in front of me, he's about 70, 80 yards out. Brought the gun up and looked, and geez, he brought his head up, and I could see the, the radar turn, and I knew that it was him, and. Big rack, big rock. And I debated on I was gonna wait, and then the wind puffed and blew towards him. He smelled the air, and he turned around and started facing the other way. So I'm, I'm looking, and, and it's, it's real thick in front of me, and, couldn't get a shot. He took a couple steps forward and I had an opening about that big at maybe 80 yards. And I thought, well, you know, you never know what those big bucks are gonna do. They could be gone in an instant. And, and I had that opening and so I hold it real steady and I squeeze it off and didn't really do anything. He kind of hunkered down, took two steps forward and I waited and waited. I, I'm thinking, did I get him? Did I get him? And next thing I know I see his doe take off and he takes off running after her and I take off running after the both of them. I run about 70 yards and as I'm, as I'm running, I see a deer coming, to, and it's him, coming quartering towards me. And there he was, he came running through the intersection right along the trail where I was at yesterday morning. Run right through there, we're damn near run me over if I'd have been sitting there. So I get the gun up and, and I try to find him in the scope, safety off, first bound, sec, and I get him in the scope and I'm just ready to squeeze the trigger. And he dipped off the back of the hill and he was gone. And he was gone. And he went down the hill and he was gone. And I went and looked, and no sign of a hit. And I found up the shot, and no sign of a hit. And I missed him again. Twice in two days. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, the scope apparently I didn't have the stock of the gun firmly in my shoulder. And the scope bit me. It bit me right there. So, I'm hating the scope right about it. Frustration doesn't even begin to describe how I feel. Nine Hundred Six Outdoors is brought to you by Race Driven. Get in touch with your adventurous side and find your drive with Race Driven. As an online retailer, dealership, and manufacturer, we can provide power sport enthusiasts with virtually any part or accessories for ATV, UTV, and motorcycles. Customer driven, quality driven, race driven. back to follow up for my shot yesterday and uh, I didn't see this yesterday but turns out my shot did get through man this is painful that shot is so close I'm, you know I'm just glad that I didn't wound him and lose him with no snow would have been very hard to track him if I had made a poor shot on him and I'm really lucky that that didn't happen because that shot is, it can't be more than a foot from killing that buck. This is my shot right here. That's where it hit. And it went through the backside there. 
And so that is really, really close. This is right about where he was standing. It looks like it was just a little bit on the low side. Incredibly frustrating. Mind-boggling. Heartbreaking. Spirit-crushing. So, uh... The show must go on. I'll cross paths with that guy one more time. One more time I will. I'll find him. I blew it two days in a row. I missed him twice and I, I thought, <laughs> I can't even describe what I thought. The, the feeling of, of blowing it, a chance of a lifetime, two days in a row. It's just devastating. I hunted the rest of the, the season, the rest of the gun season every day, and the muzzleloader every day, never saw him again. I was so moved by the story, it was such a colossal, epic story. It was too much to tell my, my dad and my brothers, my hunting partners in, in the course of five phone conversations. So I decided, I decided I'd write a book and, and share the story with them. The reason I share the story is, is, is not so much about me, but it's to encourage other hunters to get out and hunt the way that I hunt. It's the most difficult kind of hunting you're ever going to find, but it's also the most rewarding. And uh, it's the kind of thing where even if you don't see a deer, you have a great day every day. And, uh, and when you do see a deer, whether it's a doe or a spike horn or even a button buck, it's a victory. It's something to be excited and happy about. Just to see anything living out in these mountains this time of year, uh, it's just a great thrill. And, you know, uh, I thought this was uh, one of the greatest hunting stories I ever uh, heard of. And, uh, I thought it was a, a masterpiece and a classic, and I thought that the book was done. And um, but uh, you know, little did I know uh, there would be another chapter to write. And uh, I didn't know there would be another chapter to write. I thought there'd be a chance I'd never see the guy again. And uh, but uh, lo and behold, uh, we went at, we went at her again this year. And uh, there's a little more of the story to tell. in at 906outdoors.com where you can watch any of our past shows and see what's coming up next. You'll also find the UP Fishing Report, weather, shopping, and more. Be sure to join 906 Outdoors on Facebook to see where we've been and where we're going. Thanks for sticking around and we'll see you next week right here at 906 Outdoors.